I mean, point blank, do you like these guys? I don't know, man. This is what I've kind of been like questioning throughout the years. I've actually been pretty tight with them. And then there's just like moments to where they say some of like the most horrendous shit to me. And I'm like, man, do these people like actually fucking like like me or am I just like a punching bag? Oh, fuck. These people called me. These, these people who I'm trying to call right now, they called, they texted me an hour ago. Hello? Hey, what's up, man? It's the gecko guy. Hey, man. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, man. That was the... You didn't say asleep. you didn't you didn't say anything just now. Oh, you're trying to fall asleep. Oh, I was trying to fall asleep and then you fucking <laughs> you called me. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I woke you up. It sounds. Yeah. Well, you uh, have two options. Yeah, you I'm going to well, hold on. What's your first of all, what's your name? Oh, yeah. Um my name is Should I say my name? I'll say my name is uh, I'm going to uh, I'm your name your name your name to me is Lewis. I'm going to call you Lewis. Lewis, you have two options. You can either, I mean, actually you have infinite options, but I'm going to pretend like you have two options. You can either go back All to right. sleep and hang up, or you could talk to me. Uh, you know what? I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll yeah, I'll, I'll spend some time. How close were you to, you were really close to falling asleep before I called you back. I actually was. I didn't even know who was calling me. I'm just like, who the fuck? Is calling and I'm like, oh shit, it's the therapy gecko. Are you sweating right now? Uh, not Are gonna you lie, sweating? maybe. No, not at the moment, but I think I was on the brink. Um, do you, do you normally have trouble falling asleep or are you a sleepy little guy? It, it, I guess it depends. There's some things or there's some requirements that need to be meet, uh, met. Before I can go to sleep. Do you have fucked up dreams? Uh, also depend. Lewis, you texted me and you said that Counter-Strike is killing my friendships. Um, yeah, it really is. You would not be wrong. How so? Um, not gonna lie. So, basically, throughout my whole entire life, I've, uh... Usually they've been video game. I play a lot of video games and stuff. Sorry for like stuttering and stuff. I kind of just woke up and now I'm telling my uh, story that I was going to tell. <laughs> um, but I played a lot of competitive video games with my friends and stuff. And then as like I matured and years went by, I kind of grew out of that phase and I wanted, went on to play other stuff. But um, now I'm in college and all my friends go to different colleges and I don't really get to see my friends all that often. And usually, um, if I want like any sort of opportunity to like hang out with my friends per se, I, I play counter-strike and, uh, I, I, I straight up like would rather play alone than play with my friends sometimes. Why would you sense. rather play alone with your friends? Are your friends annoying you or are they just kind of like getting in the way of you uh, focusing on your game? It helps me, it helps like playing alone, not being called a retard every six seconds. And I know that usually um, these type of friend groups definitely, I'm not sure if I was allowed to say that. Sorry about that. What well, do you feel, oh. do, when your friends call you that, do you feel offended or endeared? Um, uh, explain endeared, sorry. Endeared, like is it, is it a, is it a friendly phrase to you or is it, are you offended by it? It's not my first time being called it, but like, wait, like when it just like nags at you, it gets a little offensive sometimes. Okay. Um, because I am actually like a little neurodivergent. I have a diagnosis, but oh, I don't know. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Are your friends like? Are your friends trying to be mean to you? I don't know, man. Like uh, this is what this is what I've kind of been like questioning throughout the years. It's because, like, I've, despite all of these, like, insults that they throw at me and shit, that I've actually been pretty tight with them. And then there's just, like, moments to where, like, they say some of, like, the most fucking, like, horrendous shit to me. And, like, I've been pretty stuck. I'm like, man, do these people, like, actually fucking, like, like me? Or am I just, like, a punching bag for them? And that's kind of, like, the been the big debate for me for, like, the past years I've been friends with these guys. Mmm. And if 
if I'm actually not friends with these guys, then holy shit, I have been alone for a really long time. Mm. And if I'm friends with these guys, I'm like, holy, like, what do I do? You know what I'm saying? Mm. How long have you been friends with these guys for? Um, well, they started off as my brother's friends. And uh, since they usually come over and meet me, um, I kind of transitioned into their friends. So it's been like, I'm a college freshman now. I met them in like fifth grade. Are you guys in a group chat together? Uh, I was. Not anymore. You left the group chat. I did. Why'd like, you leave the group chat, there. Lewis? I'm gonna be real with you now. Yeah. Like it, it was just like a bunch of irrelevant shit on, on there and like mm. I was uh, it was like a Snapchat group chat, so we just yeah. like snapping yeah. each other and shit. Do you I mean I mean point blank, do you like these guys? You know, a part of me does, man. Like, I, I really do like these guys. I, I enjoy hanging out with them. I'm not sure if I'm taking this shit too personally. Because sometimes mm. I, I am known for doing that. I do take shit, like, way too personally. Mm-hmm. And I probably mm-hmm. should. But mm. And then there's some phase. I'm like, dude, are you guys joking? Or is like, you guys being for real, you know? Yeah, dude. Oh, man. <sighs> well, I mean, there's a few. I feel like there's a few things at play here. One, the most important thing that I'm thinking about that's at play here is that you, what, what are you, 19? Yeah. Okay. And you ju- and you just went to college. Yep, freshman year. Okay. Um you know, look, your friendships aside and whether or not you want to stay friends with these guys, um before we even talk about that, like what's going on with you in college? Are you making new friends? Are you putting yourself out there? Ooh, man. Well, in college, I mean, I I'm not like you know, closing myself off with anybody. I obviously, like, talk to other people and stuff, but, um, I wouldn't really say those were, like, my friends. I remember talking to some, like, uh, I don't know who it was, but I remember saying, like, yeah, I talk to these people a lot, but, like, at the same time, I don't really want to, like, you know, open myself up to them because, like, I don't really want them to, like, know me and stuff. And then I just get... Are you, ta- are you, are you, are you referring to the Counter-Strike people or are these new people at college? Uh, the new people, my bad. Okay, yeah. Why don't you want them to know you? I don't know, man. Like, it, it feels, like, invasive, but, like, in mm. that way, I won't, like, make any friends and shit. Is that a general, is that a fear you've always had of, like, being afraid of people, like, knowing you? Uh, a little bit. Like, my dad, I won't, like, try and leak anything, but... I remember, like, throughout life, and especially, like, during his wedding, because he just got married, like, all these people were coming up to me, he was like, hey, man, how have you been, man? Like, I, I've seen your entire life on Facebook, and I'm like, yeah, that's great, well, I just met you, and you already know more about me than I do about you. <laughs> well, okay, what the fuck are you posting on Facebook? I'm not posting anything my dad is. Oh, okay, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, no, I get it. It can be kind of annoying when some like when like your second cousin comes up to you or something and starts pretending like they know you, and you're like, I don't know who you are. It's not even my second cousin either. It's literally just random people from my dad's work, like thirty year old like people. Those come up to me. He's like, Hey, man, how's this? How is it? I've seen your entire life story. I'm like. That's great. And I've only recently told my dad, like, please, can you, like, ask me before you, like, put me on your Facebook and stuff? Yeah. Because he's a little infamous. Oh, go ahead. I was was just going to say about your kind of situation as a whole. um, I haven't thought about this in a while, but I feel like I used to say this on the podcast a lot. Like, um, you know, the friends that you have when you're in, like, high school, they kind of – or, like, the early relationships you have, they kind of, like – form your idea of what a relationship should be which can be a little um which can be a little dangerous because if your friends are always like you know insulting you and fucking with you you can you know develop this thing where it's like oh in every friendship that i'm ever going to have in my whole life people are going to insult me and fuck with me which is not necessarily true and i don't i'm not gonna say from the information that you've given me that your friends don't like you or are bad people you know, I don't, I don't know if, no. if I have enough, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if, if we have enough information to make that, um, you know, assumption, you know, 
and you can you can drive yourself fucking crazy making assumptions as to whether or not people like you but mm-hmm. i don't know but then again i'm like you should know right you sh- if these are your boys you sh- you should know like these are my boys i i should but like Oh, actually, like, they'll sometimes, oh, they'll meet up with them, like, recently, because my dad got married and all. I met up with a few of them. Uh, one brought his girlfriend, one came straight from university. And well, I'll admit, like, it wasn't, like, terrible having them, no, excuse me, over. Um, but at some moments, it felt like there was, like, a stranger in my house and shit. And, like, I didn't, I don't mm. know what to fucking do. And that's sometimes what it feels like when they come over. But, like... Despite that, like, I know that I kind of get, like, something positive about it because we're not playing, like, video games together and shit. And, like, we're not, they're not, like, uh, treating everything like their whole fucking life's on the line. <laughs> so. Are, um, are, would you consider yourself an introverted guy? Uh, definitely not, like, very extroverted, but I'm not, like, too introverted. So I'd, I'd say I'm definitely on the introverted spectrum side, I mean. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Who's your? Do you have of all the of the? How many people are in this group? Um. Well, uh, the ones that I usually see, it's like uh, maybe like two, three, maybe like four people, I guess. And but this is the like, Counter Strike people or the college people? Uh, Counter Strike people. I don't really okay. have any like college people. I'm very tight with yet. I just have people I know and people that help me in my mm-hmm. college stuff. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Yeah. Do you have like a bet? Do you have a best friend out of this gang? Like someone you're like, all right, well, that guy, that's my, that's my boy. Yeah, man. Uh, dude, he moved a while ago, and like our ah. only public connection was video games and stuff. And um, and I don't know how the fuck we are still friends. And but like I know I'm really tight with this guy. But the thing is that I haven't heard from him. Well, I've only heard from him like slightly. But he's, like, really fed up with college and shit. And I understand, so he doesn't really, like, hang out with me that much anymore. Mm-hmm. Which I understand. It's not... I don't think it's anything personal. Like, God, I really hope not. But I, I, from what I've seen, he's just, like, fed up with college and, like, life and shit. When you said, God, I really hope not, I just, um... I just want you to, to know, like, you... I... D- don't... Uh, don't drive yourself crazy thinking about whether or not people like you you know you can really um you can really make yourself unhappy doing that i think yeah my mom was all like I remember one time in my life my mom was calling me a crazy like people pleaser and he was like dude if you continue to like have this people pleaser mentality you will go fucking crazy right of course yeah 100 <laughs> percent um let me ask you that are do yeah, you so back i mean back to away from uh, we're kind of going back and forth here, but away from the Counter Strike guys and into college, yeah. do you want do you want to make friends? Obviously, yeah, I, I do, but like, fuck, man, it's like scary. <laughs> the college I go, I'm not gonna like drop any like where I go to college and stuff. I'm trying to like avoid that. Come a few close a few times, but um, the, the type of college I go to, it's not like usually my age group. Obviously, you'll find that age group there, but like it, it varies, like. There's, like, my age group, and then it jumps up to, like, people in their, like, fucking 30s or 40s. Hmm. Um. You know, it's funny. When I was in college, when I was in college, I had some friends in their 30s and 40s because I was in the comedy scene. And that was, like, you know, it was, like, 18-year-olds hanging out with, like, 45-year-old twice-divorced guys doing doing their bits and stuff. It was fun. Um, Yeah. You know, I you're actually now talking to you. I'm thinking about when I was you're you said you're a freshman? Freshman, yes sir. I'm thinking about when I was a fr- when I was a freshman, I I struggled to make friends a lot. Like the f- the freshman year of college was really fucking hellish, dude, cuz I didn't have any friends and it wasn't until um sophomore year that I started getting really into into comedy and doing that stuff that I started to make friends and i learned that the best way to make friends and form a community around you and i don't know if this is your speed i don't know you know what what you're game for but the best way to do it is to find a community of 
Find a community of people that already exists and find a way to add value to that community. Or if that community of people doesn't exist, you create it, you know? So, like, could you theoretically go on the, you know, let's say you attend Toilet Paper University. Could you go on the Toilet right. Paper University class of 2028 Facebook page? This is what I did. And you post, like, hey, I'm doing a LAN Counter-Strike night at the <laughs> student center. You know, come on through. There'll be enough, there'll be... You know, at least five other dudes that come through and play games. You know, like if you really, if you really want to be like, fuck it, I'm putting myself out there. I'm gonna like be entrepreneurial about this and and really do something. You could, uh, you could give that a go. I know it's hard. I know it's scary to put yourself out there like that, but yeah. Um, you know, I mean, that's on a personal level. That's that's what worked for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there are some. Um, uh, like groups, like, like, especially I'm, uh, I know video games aren't my whole spiel, but they've kind of been, um, definitely a big part of my life for mm-hmm. ever. Like, but <clears throat> I'm not like the whole esports things. Like I said, I don't, I don't, I don't like really competitive games anymore. And mm-hmm. stuff, it doesn't, but, don't it didn't have to be video. It didn't have to be, video. you know, I, the, the main thing I know about you yeah. is video games. I, I'm sure you have other like things that you're interested in. Um, oh yeah, but I mean, like, I mean, fuck it. Well, like, what? Uh, what, you want me to name stuff? Yeah. Uh, I train in boxing, and I I do a lot of that stuff. I fuck with that heavy. Oh shit! Or, like combat sports in general, I really love. Dude, that shit. all right. Why didn't you tell me that at the beginning? You got to do a fight club. <laughs> it's just big, dude. Like this. Um, my friend. Um. He started something similar to that at his own university. Dude, <laughs> he, do he fight came over and all stuff. By oh, the way, when man. it comes, I feel like also when it comes to like guys, like nothing fucking brings two people, nothing brings two guys closer together than beating the fucking shit out of each other. Because afterwards, they really, they, it really, there's some, I don't, there's some chemical released in the brain after two guys beat the shit out of each other that makes them just want to, you know, kiss. Yeah, I, I I actually get what you're saying, man. Um, I remember getting knocked out and stuff, but like, and the guy who knocked me out, he was like, I don't know, man. He came up to me and he was like, "Damn, you're crying because he felt really bad." And he's saying like, "There's nothing personal against you, man. You fight really well. I like you and all that stuff." And like all the people that I spar with, man, it's always just like in that moment, and then once you're out of it, like, you like you're friends and shit. See, that's another thing you can do is you can um, you can let a bunch of people beat the shit out of you, and then they'll feel sorry for you and be your friend. Man, I can't really do that without any form of self defense. But you know no, what? I, I, I kind of that's definitely a good point. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, look, man, all, all that all that's to say, and this is this is from you know a, a deep sense of personal experience with with this whole thing. Um, is that if if you have the drive to like put yourself out there. And like create something that that puts you around other people, then you know it's it's a lock. So, I mean that, that that's just what I that's just something something you know. I mean you don't have to go out and you know form a thing immediately. You can if you want to. You should, but uh, you know just something just, yeah. uh, something I, something I would chew on as you as you fall asleep um, three hours later because I've interrupted your REM cycle. Oh god, I really don't hope it's three hours later, but I think I can knock myself out pretty fast. What's your name again? Lewis. Uh, it's not Lewis, uh, but it's. I, uh, no, go ahead. All right, what is just it? Call me Lewis. I, I I think Lewis is a good name for me. I like it. Uh, Lewis, man, I'm 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 glad I got to talk to you. I li- I like talking about this subject because again, uh. You know, it's it's something I've I've dealt with. Is is there anything in particular you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? Um. Wow. I remember hearing you say to other people, I didn't know what I'd say. Uh, forgive people because if you don't, then it's going to be a huge waste of time in the past. 
just thinking like, oh, fuck that guy when you could have just been hanging out this whole time, I guess. Have beautiful, sweet dreams, Lewis. All right. Thanks, Kick. I appreciate it, man, for calling me. Take care, man. Thanks for talking to me instead of sleeping. Bye. All right. Let's see you. I had a dream the other night that um, I went with Optimus Prime to his house where he was roommates with John Lovitz and they were both really religious. I said that on the podcast before, but I thought I would say that again. Hello? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, is this? Uh, is this Bryce? Yeah, is this the Gek? Yeah, what's up, man? How's it going, Gek? Uh, actually, it's going pretty good. I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling in the zone, baby. That's good, man. So I I stumbled across your content maybe like a month ago, and I have something that I want to tell your viewers that I've never told anybody else. Okay. What um. Is it? So, and I don't know. I've never came to anybody with this problem, but the only other person who knows is my girlfriend. And sometimes spicy food and sour food is a little too hot for me. So I'll have her pre-chew it and kind of baby bird it into my into my mouth. And is that weird? I love hot food and I love spicy food, but or uh, sour food and hot food. But sometimes, dude, it just fucks me up. So you'll have your girlfriend chew it and spit it into your mouth? Just a little bit, not a lot. Just just enough to, like, take the coating off of it. And the thing is, dude, I'm a huge stoner, too, so it's like you should like spicy food and sour food and candy, but it's, it's rough. On, and I do like it. I like it a lot, but it just fucks me up. Makes my face hurt real bad, and, and hot food just destroys my stomach if I don't have her do it. And, and and I could rinse it off underwater, right? But I feel like that's gross putting tap water on it. At least her mouth is has the same thing as my mouth. How often is she doing this for you? Um, Probably at least once a week. We've been together for six years. Probably once a week for the past three years. Um... I know. Listen, Gek. I know it's a lot to take in. I know. Has but she? Has least... she? Has she told anyone about it? No, of course not. No, no. She's a great woman. Okay. Why are you? So, why are you so? Also... Um, you know, embarrassed about this. Well, have you ever heard of anybody else doing it? Well, I. You know, look. Do you? Do you do you make out with your girlfriend? Yes, absolutely. Do you put your tongue in her mouth? Yes, absolutely. Yes, do you, Gek. Do you do you lick all around her mouth with your tongue? I mean, I do more than that, but yeah. So, I mean, look, theoretically you're licking up all the same stuff that you would be eating with her chewed food. So, is it gross on paper? Yes. But when you really think about it, you know, you're not doing anything new. I'm so happy that you see this the same way I do, Gek. Mm hmm. Um, um, do you ever, do you ever chew food um, for her? Uh, no, she doesn't. She doesn't really have that problem. That's why she's kind of. And that's the thing. It was kind of her idea to start with. And um, I was kind of standoffish at first. And she's like, let's just try it. And so I tried it, and it ended up being, like, the key to it. Do you I think, tried do the you, water. Do you think she ever... Do you, I tried do you think water she, like, and all that, and I just don't like it. Do you, Is this something you or her, like, get off to? No, no, it's nothing like that. It's just, it's just, she loves me very much. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Is that too much love? Does she spit it directly into your mouth? 
Um, I don't like, I don't want her spit on my hands. You know what I mean? So, I mean, kind of. Wait, 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 wait. You don't want her spit on your hands? Well, that's the thing about it is I don't, is, well, I mean, I don't want to talk about anything sexual or anything like that, but I don't want her to regurgitate the food into my hands. You know what I mean? I'd rather it just go straight to where my spit is. Is your, are you with your girlfriend right now? I am. Can I talk to her? Yeah, you can. Kaylee, is this, are you cool? Mm-hmm. Here you go, Gek. Hello? Hello. Hey, what's up, Kaylee? What's up? Um, tell me about baby birding food into your boyfriend's mouth. I mean, I was just... At first, it was kind of meant to be a joke. I was like, hey, you want me to chew it up and put it in your mouth for you? You know what I mean? And then he was like, do you think it'd work? And uh, I was like, uh, I mean, I guess I can give it a shot. And then I guess it just became like a, a, a thing that regularly happened. It became not a joke after, after a while. Huh. Okay, so do you only do it with spicy food, or do you do it with any other kind of food? I mean, anything spicy or sour. Do you like doing it, or do you kind of dread doing it? I mean, it's not that I dread doing it, but I mean, I mean, sometimes, you know what I mean? I'm mean, like, when I'm sleeping or something, he'll wake me up, you know what I mean, to like snack, and like that shit gets a little annoying, you know what I mean? So wait, I, I get wait, a little wait, 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 sometimes. Wait, 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 wait. He'll wake you up in the middle of the night to chew his food for him? I mean, not necessarily in the middle of the night, but if, like, I'm sleeping in that morning, you know what I mean? And he's up a little bit earlier and he's eaten and he it happens to be spicy or sour. Yeah, there's been times where he's woken me up like, hey, babe, will, will you wake up and help me out real quick? And how do you feel when he does that? I mean, those times it does get a little uh, irritating. But I mean, that's, I guess it's not any more irritating as him asking me to get him a bowl of cereal or something when he's too lazy to get up. I guess I just kind of looked at it as one of the downfalls of a committed relationship. I can be a lot worse. You've had a lot worse relationships. Point. I don't know if I would call that a good point, but um, do you... Do you also not tell anyone about this? No, I honestly, I'm a little afraid of judgment. Interesting. Um, would you be embarrassed if anyone found out? Yeah, probably. Do you? Maybe a little, yeah. Do you ever chew food and spit it into his mouth no is this like a kink thing for you guys at all no at least not for me how often do you do it I mean it's not like an everyday thing but anytime like we're at the gas station and I mean, we're looking for snacks, and he might be in the mood for, like, a bag of Takis or, like, some sour Skittles or something like that. You chew the entire bag of sour Skittles and baby bird it into his I mean, not the entire bag, but, I mean, however much he's in the mood for eating at that time, yeah. Does this make you guys feel closer together? Absolutely. I was asking her. I'm so sorry, Jack. That is codependent. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. How how closer can you get, I guess? Guess we are closer than most couples out there. All right. Um, is this something you guys would like to continue doing? I mean, I guess if there was a way around it, it wouldn't be. It, it's not like I I w love to do it. Love to do. No. 
How's everything going in your relationship uh, otherwise? I mean, pretty good. We're, we're recovering fentanyl addicts. So the last year has been a whole new path for us after getting sober and clean because the first four and a half years of our relationship, we were high and using together. So it's been a whole new ball game the past year, just figuring out our, what our relationship is sober. Mm. How long have you guys been together for it? Oh, six years this Christmas Eve. Nice. And did you did you meet through fentanyl and drugs and stuff? Um, he was in drugs before he met me. Um, I was kind of just starting to branch out. I smoked weed at a young age, but I was just kind of starting to branch out into pain pills and things like that. And we met through uh, one of his family members. So not really met through drugs, but sort of. And you guys were getting high together for four years. Yeah. What was the um, the the impetus or driving force for getting sober? Well, we got arrested, and I had never been in any legal trouble before. And while I was in jail that night, our apartment burnt to the ground. Um, it had nothing to do with us. They said it was uh, a cigarette butt was thrown out, and it got up into the lining of the house and caught the house on fire. So when I got out to absolute nothing and no place to live and no house, it kind of urge me to get my life together but Bryce was still in jail at the time so instead of getting my life together I kind of lost my shit for a bit and he got out of jail and was like we got to get our shit together so we decided to get sober was it difficult it was it, it was definitely a leap of faith uh, we moved from our hometown in Indiana all the way across the country to California to go to detox and get sober are you glad you did it? I am very glad we did it. Watch so many people die. I had friends and family dying in my hometown, and my my life was just falling apart. And I finally decided to get sober. And in a couple months, we're actually being made house manager, so things are actually looking up. You know, you know in light of everything you got, in light of everything you guys are telling me. Baby birding spicy food into this guy's mouth doesn't seem all that bad. I guess you're right. Um, what do you guys do? Uh, how, you guys have been clean for two years? We've been clean for almost a year now. Cool. Um, how's everything going in your individual lives? Pretty well. Pretty well. I've been... Coming out of my shell a lot more lately. I, I making friends and I, I'm trying to get him out of his shell and starting to make friends, but a little bit harder. In my individual life, I feel like I find myself sitting at home all day watching YouTube videos of things that I should be doing, but I don't do. And I constantly find myself in a fit of rage for the smallest things. Okay, like what? Like, um, if you slightly annoy me, my overreaction will be dramatic. If something goes wrong in the day, my overreaction could be dramatic. It's, it's weird. I, I've grown up on drugs my whole entire life. So coming off them as a young, I'm 23. So coming off them as a young adult, I don't know how to deal with emotion. Hmm. When you say you're watching YouTube videos of things you should do, what are these YouTube videos? Um, you know, like inspirational videos, just things that you, that you can change your life easily. Whether it's an whether it's an Andrew Tate inspirational video or a Sam Hyde inspirational video, they call out the things that I'm doing that I shouldn't be, but I just continue to do. Bryce, are you fucking with me? Absolutely not. What do you need? Dude, what kind of Sam Hyde inspirational videos are you watching? Okay, so like 
the one where he says, don't smoke weed. Weed's for losers. You know what I mean? But I love weed and it's hard not to smoke weed. And some people don't like Sam Hyde. I understand that. I just want him to fight I does, honestly. What do you, Bryce, what do you, like, what, what do you want to do? What are you trying to be inspired to do? Um, honestly, it'd be my ultimate dream would be a successful YouTube channel with Kaylee. Me and her kind of want to be nomads and live van life and venture out. You know what I mean? But, I mean, I'll be honest with you, Gek. I have something holding me back, and it's a warrant in my home state. And it's like, I got that warrant because I came out here to California to get sober, and I was supposed to go back. But I knew if I went back, I would just continue getting high and end up in prison. So I stayed in California. So if I ever get picked up, there's always that hanging over my head. What a, what about Kaylee? You said your name was. Yes, here. Yeah. What's 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 your dream, Kaylee? Do you want to do all that, travel and make videos and whatnot? See, my dream is more of the travel and nomad life, and his thing is more of the making videos than YouTube. And there's all these people out there, you know, doing it together. So we're already in a relationship so why not mix our dreams and make it a reality okay um all right i'll bite bryce what what kind of andrew tate videos are you watching so uh, man i wish i could find the user it's um they're always very well edited and he it's just his very good bulletin points just those Where's my remote? I wish I knew that YouTuber's name right now. Okay, what um, kinds so of I was, like... I was, yeah, go ahead. I was just now recently watching the one where um, his workout routine in, in prison. He said that the guards were trying to break his spirit, so he did push-ups at them. I wish that I could have that drive. <laughs> he, said, he said he did push-ups at them? at them and I know how fucking alpha of you but <laughs> it's just that type of drive that sits in my body that I wish I could let out some time um dry, drive for what uh just to just to be a better person now that I've gotten sober I don't I don't want to just sit by and waste my years I feel like life is very important to Figure out something that you love to do and do that. What is but what I is being, like, what does being a better person look like to you? A better boyfriend always. I always feel like I can improve there. Um, a better role model to people. A better son. I did my mom dirty in all kinds of ways. And um, some some a laugh. I like to make people laugh. Okay. Um, hmm. What do you What do you both do for work? So right now, since we have been recovering and I'm transferring states, um, I have been working on getting my birth certificate and everything like that, so I can get a job here. But I'm about to get this house manager job in my program, and that's awesome. That will keep me sober for a long time, and I can help a lot of people that way. But I don't know if I want to settle and do that my whole life. What about you, Kaylee? Hold on. Let me get her. She had to. Ben, get to What was the question? Oh, I was just asking. Uh, well, actually, I kind of forget what the question was. Uh, I was asking okay. kind of like what. Well, I, I'm, I'm kind of just trying to get a, a hold of like what your guys is. Oh well, I think I asked you what I asked uh, Bryce what being a better person looks like. So I'll ask the question to you. Being a better person for me looks like right now. Um, I guess it for me it looks like becoming more motivated in my life. 
Um, Because I have all of these things, and it's not like big life-changing things that I want to do, but let's say, for example, like I want to clean my room or do my makeup that day, and I I Mm. really want to get up and do it, but I just can't find the the motivation to get my lazy ass up out of bed and do the things I want to do. It's like, Mm. oh, you know what I mean? What's the point of doing my makeup today when I'm not planning on doing anything? When really I just wanted to do it to make myself feel better, and I know that, but I'll kind of talk myself out of it, like, eh, no. So I guess being a better person for me is finding the motivation to do the little things that make me happier in life. Mm-hmm. Do you um? Just, do you, do you also? I know that uh, Bryce said he's he's working on being a, a house manager. Do you have uh, a gig that you do right now? Um. Yeah. Not currently. Um, really since I gotten sober, I mean, I was 16 when I started using drugs, so I didn't really get a chance to grow up or figure out what I really wanted to do in life. So I've really just kind of worked at restaurants here and there and things like that in my time. So I'm still trying to figure out what I really want to do. I know that I want to work in treatment, Mm -hmm. at least for a short, short term goal and try to help other recovering addicts that you know what I mean are still in their addiction because I've always had like I like I said I grew up in a small town and drugs overtook that little town and I always felt bad for all the friends and acquaintances that I had to leave behind in my addiction to get sober and make my life better so I guess my goal would be to work in treatment and try to save as many people that I could that's good I look it sounds like both of you guys have uh positive goals that you're working towards. I, I don't know if you guys believe that about yourselves. I really appreciate that because be, being recovery at, recovering addicts and being so new in our recovery, I mean, we like to think that we're doing the right thing and we're making all the right decisions, but you're never really sure being a recovering addict. You're never really sure if it's if you're doing good enough in your life now to atone for all the things you did in the past. What 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 are you unsure about? I don't know. I guess I was just. I guess I've just been unsure if I'm really trying hard enough to make my life better. I guess, or if I'm just kind of riding the the wave. Well, I mean, look, um, you got sober, which is a hard thing to do. Um, you have goals and desires i mean i don't know you guys that well but it sounds like to me that you're um moving forward in a in a productive manner i really appreciate that for sure um is bryce still there yes here he is did you want to talk to Bryce, or did you want to continue with Kaylee? Uh, I don't know. Well, we started this talking about fucking uh, sour skittles, and uh, yeah, I, I, this this conversation has gotten much deeper than I anticipated it would. Um, well, that, that's the thing. You're 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 you ask the right questions, Gek. I guess, is there anything else that you guys wanted to talk about? Um, when are you going on tour again? Uh, probably in 2024. <clears throat> Listen, Bryce, I'm going to say that. I didn't want to get into this whole thing because I just don't, I'm not going to like. No, sit, Gex, fuck, I'm not going to sit, I'm not going to sit here and have this whole discussion, but, uh, <laughs> be careful with the Andrew Tate, Sam Hyde shit. All right. Oh, well, I mean, Andrew Tate's a terrible person, and I mean, Sam Hyde's done more than less savory savory things on the internet and said some more or less savory things. I'm saying the success and drive. If I had that type of power, I wouldn't use it like that. Is there anything else you guys want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Hey, um, I love you, Twitch. I love my juicers. And, uh, what's a, wait, what's a juicer? 
Uh, it's a it's a XTC watcher. It's a what watcher? It's oh, XQC. XQC. I don't I don't really know anything about XQC. I know he plays a lot of chess. Yeah, I mean he's he's pretty he's pretty good chess. Well, um, good luck to you guys. You guys seem like nice people, and uh, you know, give yourselves some credit because I, you know, it sounds like you both started out in pretty, um, uh, you know, fucked up circumstances, and you you both seem to have pretty um, uh, positive outlooks on life and desires to change for the better. So, um, you know, keep keep following. They were that, less. I think. Go ahead. The the they were less than favorable, and um, and. We were we were really lost, and this conversation has helped us a lot. Good. Um, so thank you, Gek. Thank you to yeah, people. Of course. Thank you. Fuck. Take care, guys. You too. Later, Gek. Okay, the idea of trying to do push-ups at somebody is undeniably funny, though. I liked those guys. They seemed... They seemed nice. Call from... Dalton. Hello. Hello. Dalton, what's up? What up, Mr. Gecko? I am just doing little lizard stuff. What's going on with you, Dalton? Dude, I don't even know where to start, man. <laughs> okay. Um, I just moved 2,300 miles away from my original hometown. Congrats. And it's kind of a big step for me. I'm only 20. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a big jump for myself. Did it all in my little car. <laughs> what was the impetus for this 2,300 mile move? Um, I'd say just my current living situation wasn't the best. My like family and stuff wasn't all the best either. I didn't have like the most support. So I moved out here to my brother. Cause, yeah. Interesting. How old's your brother? He's twenty five. Twenty four. Alright. Alright, so he's a little bit older. What uh what's how long has he been out wherever you are? He's been out here for a couple of years. We uh, plan on getting our own place here in about a year or so. He's staying out here with like family friend kind of deal thing. Oh, so you're are you staying with him who's staying with a family friend? Kind of thing, yeah. All right. Um, can I ask where you guys are? Yeah, sure. It's uh, East Coast, Pennsylvania. Cool. So you moved from the West Coast, I assume. Yeah, Arizona. And um, what do you do out there? Do you did you line up a job at all? Yeah, car, just car stuff. Cool. What's your brother do? Same thing, car stuff as well. Did he get you a but car job? Yeah, basically, yeah. That's a good I'm brother. very fortunate of. He works for a pretty cool company, Porsche. So I'm going to assume that your brother moved out a few years ago for fairly similar reasons that you just moved. Right on the money, brother. Right on it. Yeah, exactly. Is he your only sibling, or do you guys got anyone else? We got one other, both like mother and father sibling. And a couple like half. Are you friends? Are you are you close with any of the halves or with the other whole? The other whole, hundred percent. Yeah, we. Uh, she's out on the west side, and still, she got her own like stuff going on. But uh, the half, not so much. Are you all sort of united in a commiseration over your childhoods? Yeah, we all, <laughs> yeah, we all uh, reminisce of our old fucked up childhood. Now that mm -hmm. we're getting back on our own paths and stuff, getting way better than what we were brought into. Hmm. That's cool, man. That's good that you had older siblings because then you didn't have to. Well, I mean, no, not not to discredit you. You you made a, a large jump that I'm sure was very difficult, but. It must have been nice to have older siblings that did it first, so you, so there was sort of a path laid out of some kind. No, 100%. Without them, yeah, I would have been lost for sure. How are you feeling now? 
Um, it's a little shell shock overwhelming, but uh, overall pretty good. I'm excited for my new journey and what awaits for me. Mm -hmm. What? Very tell excited. me about this. Tell me about this new journey. What awaits for you? Well, also, I've left out like a big detail as well. I got out of like a two-year relationship right before I moved. So like, yeah, that's that was also a big like hard thing to like leave. That was like one of the main things holding me there still. How long were you with this person for? Two years. Okay. Hmm. Do you, did it end sort of amicably or how did it end? Kind of, uh, it was, uh, I want to say bad, neither good. I mean, it wasn't any, it wasn't anything super terrible. It was kind of mutual. And yeah, um, we just went the way the, like, the contact went about it and like the no contact afterwards went about it was like super weird and like found out she also was like fucking with like real close homies of mine and everything like super right after we broke up and everything so like yeah it was super weird mm. what's your what's your friend situation like are you still good friends with any of the folks back in Ari you said Arizona yeah are you still good friends with any say... of the Arizona folks just a couple, not not very many. Most of them, not not the ones like, that are fucking with your girlfriends. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, most of them are like mutual friends and shit. So like every time I go and talk to them, I'm hearing about that bitch, and it's like, bro, this is not why I'm friends with you. <laughs> now, what about in Pennsylvania? What's your social life look like now? Nothing right now, bro. Like, not not a whole lot of anything. Um, mm -hmm. Just, yeah, not a whole lot of anything. Just getting settled here myself and, yeah, getting, like, all my legal shit switched over, like, driver's license and registration for the car and whatnot. Hmm. Yeah, it's hard uh, to make that whole transition and then, like, because you gotta, you gotta parse it out. If you try to do all of your legal shit and get a house and get a whole friend group and a new girlfriend and a new job and eternal happiness all in one week. You're going to, that's too much pressure. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not too, too much of a social life. I'm kind of just more focused on me and what I got going on and shit. It's a lot. <laughs> What's your brother's family friends deal? That's oh man, it's a it's a whole lot of stuff. He met so it's not even like it's their family now because how close he's got with them and how amazing people they are. And he met these people through like when he was in school and college when he came out here on the jump that he made and met this really cool friend with this really cool family and flash forward a few years here we are nice nice are you have you become close with them too very yeah they're super super awesome they're super cool people it's very cool of them to like let your brother crash on their couch and then have your brother be like hey can my brother crash on your couch too and they're like yeah type shit yeah well it's, it, they have a really big beautiful home and they had a bunch of kids living here like a few years ago and they all moved on to like colleges and stuff. So they were like how, more than happy to have us come. How do you guys know these people? He met them through when he was in school, when he was in college, a college friend. Word. And so you're 20, right? Mm -hmm. Did you ever want to go to college or do anything like that? Or were you always trying to just go straight into, into life? See, I've been, I was, forced to just be straight into life since like 15 16 probably even younger so like yeah i haven't really thought of that mm -hmm. i haven't been in that position to mm -hmm. but I, i'm sure like one day if i get in the financial rim of that i would love to but yeah do you have some kind of like ultimate like thing that you want to pursue or do 
many things, many, many things. Um, I'm, I'm like, I, I've just watched one of your videos of the motorcycle dude. Yeah. Um, I'm a bit like motorcycle dude. <laughs> Like uh, I hope I, I hope you're not too much like motorcycle dude. He's a cool guy, <laughs> not but too much. He's, okay, okay, you know. okay. So I'll backtrack. I'll backtrack. Uh, not too much like motorcycle man. Okay, he has some pretty wild attributes going on for himself. But no, 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 no. Just in the speed demon sense and the riding motorcycles. <laughs> are you? Are you? Do you like to ride motorcycles? Love to. Yeah. That was the when I said I hope you're not too much like motorcycle guy. That was the one thing I was referring to. Although oh, fuck. that was a dumb thing of me to say because if you say you're like motorcycle guy, and then I go, well, I hope not the part of motorcycle guy that likes motorcycles. But yet we're referring to him as motorcycle <laughs> guy. It's like what other fucking part of him would you be referring to? So yeah, true that, true that. <laughs> Yeah, I love motorcycles. I love adrenaline stuff. Um, I go to raves and shit. I'm super excited for raves out here. I see you do that, like, uh, Electric Forest thing you go to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did Electric Forest back in the summer, and it was it was really awesome. Yeah. So I'm super excited for some East Coast raves and stuff. Where in Pennsylvania are you? Westchester. Westchester. How far? How I, I I know people who are like from there. How close is that to Philly? Like, not even an hour. Like right under an hour. Have you ever been to Philadelphia? Oh yeah, I love going to Philly, bro. There's nothing yeah. like a Philly cheesesteak from Philly. Yeah, Philly's a great city, man. Love it. Well, look, dude. I think uh, uh, first of all, big up on you. I'm glad that you made the decision to get the fuck out right because you could have just stayed it would have been more comfortable for you to stay but you got out sure. and now you're um uh i mean even if things are in sort of a transitionary period right now it sounds as though they're going to iron out and you'll be glad you left so good on you for thank that you. thank you sir is there any other things it's okay if not but is there anything else like kind of going on or anything else that you want to talk about or, or say to the people the computer uh, um yeah not 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 exactly brother not exactly i'm really grateful to talk to you i've tried to call you about thousands of times so i'm glad to reach to you once and it was nice speaking to you yeah nice speaking to you too that's a that's a cool re sort of recurring theme I think we've talked about on here is people trying to uh, reinvent themselves or get away from what's comfortable and to go out on a limb like you did. And, you know, it's not easy. So, again, props on you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good night, man. You as well. Hello, folks. It's Lyle here. That's the end of this episode, but get this, I'm releasing a bonus episode this week. That's right, an entire extra hour of the podcast that you can listen to by becoming a premium member of Therapy Gecko over at therapygecko.supercast.com. Supercast subscribers get access to bonus episodes, they get a completely ad-free podcast feed of the regular show, they get recordings from my live shows, members-only streams, and they help support my ability to continue doing this podcast. So here's a clip from this week's members-only bonus episode. Lately, uh, I've been experiencing with a dissociative uh, disorder. You've been experiencing dissociative disorder. Yeah, after mm. a, a bad uh, a bad trip. You know, I, I've seen a doctor and, and all, but it, it's a very uh, particular uh, state of mind. Where are you calling uh, from? I'm calling from uh, Quebec. Oh, oh, you're French. Okay, I thought you were fucking with me. If you want to hear this full conversation, you can sign up to become a premium member at therapygecko.supercast.com or find the link in the episode description. That's therapygecko.supercast.com. All right, I have nothing else to say.